Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. Thank you for joining me this week. We have some very heavy hitting words that I heard from the Father this past week in my journal. I also have some uh, exciting confirmations that you all have sent in to uh, sprinkle throughout uh, the words that I read today. Thank you so much for all your contributions, your great comments, uh, just your love, your support. Are, they are very life-giving to me, and it makes my heart feel very glad and joyful to be part of such a wonderful community of believers as we have here. Our episode this week is entitled Perilous Times and Abundant Times. Well, there's a contrast for you. <laughs> also, we'll be ending the show with signs and wonders uh, photos that you have all sent in. So stay tuned for that. All right, we're going to begin. Uh, today is March 26th of 2024, and we're going to start with March 19th of 2024. Seeming losses will become triumphs. Hmm. He said, you're seeing unfold before you some wins and some apparent losses as the war between light and dark and justice and injustice moves towards a crisis point. Don't let the enemy plant discouragement in your minds over the seeming losses. These losses are bolstering the darkness's confidence and their arrogance will lure them deeper into my trap. Remember that I have told you to look at events with spiritual eyes. That is, you see events from my bigger perspective. This is what I am showing you is happening behind the scenes to these earthly men who think they are gods. They believe that events are moving them towards a lineup for promotion and great riches. I will show you that they are being lined up all right. They will find themselves in a lineup for judgment and justice with all their wealth, power, and positions stripped from them. Don't get caught up in believing doom and gloom reports. Use your authority to continue to call out for exposure, exposure, exposure. Decree that my judgment and justice would be released on your nation and that their sources of money would be cut off and diverted to the righteous. Declare that all their evil schemes would backfire on them and that they would feel Haman's noose around their necks. I am promising you that seeming losses will become triumphs. And you know how I love that word. <laughs> all right. Then we had some confirmations that came in this week. Um, many of you confirm that what I am sharing from the Father is what you are also hearing from the Lord. And that's always very encouraging to hear that. And I know it encourages you too, because we both, oh yeah, we really are hearing him speak to us. All right. Had some more rolling thunder confirmations. Kimberly W. heard three rolling booms. Just never could figure out, you know, what, what they were, but, but they just awoke, they woke them up and these three rolling booms, long, long, long ones. Uh, Beatrice uh, H um, or Beatrice M heard loud thunder. I mean, really loud thunder and no rain. Interesting, huh? Paul Bless shared that in Jamaica last year, they had four hours of thunder and then an earthquake. Wow. She was thankful. Not much damage was done. And there were there was no loss of life. So we praise God for that. But the thunder, the shakings are rolling in. LS had a vision as she was declaring and decreeing on her back porch. She heard this huge crashing sound. And then she heard the sound of breath coming out. And she saw with her spiritual eyes. Sorry to keep you hanging. Next page. She saw a giant, like 70 to 75 feet tall, fall on the ground. And she said, this stuff really works. <laughs> so we all need to know that too. It works. <laughs> Stella M. awoke hearing these words. 
bittersweet Sam Cook. Well, she went right to work and researched. And that is exactly what God is inviting you into when he gives you cryptic messages or just a few words or a number. He is saying, search the matter out. And so she, um, this is what she found. She researched a song by Sam Cooke, didn't know he was a singer, and it is entitled, A Change is Gonna Come. <laughs> wow, is that powerful? I have no idea what the song is about, but God speaks in secular titles in many, many ways because his message can be spoken through. <laughs> so it's going to be bittersweet. There's going to be things that are wiped away, but they are going to be replaced with something that's better. Amanda T. confirmed she had also heard the Lord say that he will bring the darkness. It's him that is going to bring the darkness, not the bad guys. She heard this about a year ago, uh, and the, the father said to her, Do not fear, for I am with you. You will still see through my glory you will still see. That is just so beautiful. And you've got to remember that the Egyptians, when the Israelites were in the land of Egypt and being held as slaves, when the plagues began to fall, especially the one of deep, deep darkness for three days, the land of Goshen had light. Tell me how that happens. It's only God. Oh, somebody had a question too. I think several people about uh, me mentioning, or the father mentioning, putting on our armor of light. And we're pretty familiar with the armor that's listed in Ephesians 6, but there is an armor of light. And that's from Romans 13, verse 12. This is out of the New American Standard. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the de deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. And then let me read it to you, Romans 13, 12, in the Passion Translation. Night's darkness is dissolving away as a new day of destiny dawns. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes, and once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Love both those. Beautiful. All right, we're going to move on to March 20th, 2024. And this one um, kind of got a chuckle, but it is a very serious message. But the Father is always ready to laugh because the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is cleanup on aisle seven. The cleanup on aisle seven has begun in earnest. I am speaking of the cleaning out of my church of corruption, perversion, and betrayal. And those of you who aren't familiar with biblical meanings of number seven in the Bible always represents spiritual completion. It's like the perfection of God. And that's what the church is supposed to reflect. We don't do it perfectly ever, but we're supposed to be closer than we are now. <laughs> So he's cleaning out of his church corruption, perver perversion, and betrayal. Leaders who are hiding behind religious masks, but who are inwardly wolves, will be exposed and removed. These whitewashed tombs have influenced congregations and whole movements to focus on outward conforming behaviors, but never dealing with the deep issues of the human heart. These people can quote my word and sound so spiritual, but behind closed doors, they indulge in corruption and perversion. I am done with these churches who teach outward conformity and ignore inner transformation of the heart. They raise up people who are critical of true freedom and who look down their noses at those who need my rescue and my deliverance. These people know my word, but they don't know my heart. I can't think of anything worse. Those in the world with broken lives, captured by sin, 
do not need a set of outward religious rules or anybody looking down their nose at them. They need to know the heart of a father who would give his son's life for them. They need to know the power of my spirit to transform their lives from the inside out. I want them to experience a supernatural God who saves, heals, and delivers, and who wants to be known, deeply known, heart to heart. I want them to live in my signs, wonders, and miracles every day. Yes, I want them to know and treasure my written word, but life is so, but life in me is so much more than that. I am shaking my church awake and delivering it out of the religious spirit and into the freedom of truly changed lives and hearts. The religious spirit has allowed deep corruption into the church. I want to repeat that. The religious spirit has allowed deep corruption into the church. And I am removing these leaders and bringing my conviction to those who followed them. No more outward religion that puts me in a box. This new era will bring my freedom and my heart to all areas of society. But it must first begin in the hearts of my people. The cleanup on aisle seven will result in a powerful, real, and loving expression of my heart. And many will be drawn in and will experience transformed hearts and lives. All right, somebody anonymous on my blog uh, left uh, a post about the traits of a religious spirit that they had discovered. This isn't an exhaustive list, but it just might help you sort out your own heart and see where it might have a hook in you because most of us were brought up in it. It's what the majority of the, the church has devolved into, sadly. But Reformation is coming. So he said, just put some focus on what we see in abundance in today's church. We see the spirit of religion is busier than ever at work and no different than it was when Jesus was dealing with the Sadducees, scribes, and Pharisees. And you'll remember that in the word of God, Jesus's harshest words were never to a sinner, were never to an adulterer, were never to a thief. They were to the Pharisees, the religious spirit because it kills true spiritual life and intimacy. So he said, what are some of the things, he, she, what are some of the things we commonly see in many churches that are characteristics <clears throat> of the work of the religious spirit? This list is by no means exhaustive. Fear of not being good enough. If you are following Christ faithfully and have no peace or joy, something is amiss. Fear of what people think about you or may say about you. Reliance on works, not trusting the blood of Jesus for the atonement of all sins. Emphasis on external things, like did you read your Bible enough? Did you pray enough? Did you go to church enough? All external things. It's not that there's anything wrong with any of those things. It's just that's not true spirituality because it's done to outwardly conform to a law instead of inwardly pursuing the God that we love. Um, let's see, lack of power and a judgment against false prophecy, like everything is false prophecy to them. Emphasis on old man-made traditions, often having absolutely no basis in scripture at all. Emphasis on rituals, special rules, and regulations. Pride in personal sacrifice. Um, if you have this list in your head that you check off, okay, I did my devotions, check, that's done. It's like pursuing God is not a checklist. It is how much time can I give him this morning? How much can I stay connected with him all day long? A lack of mercy a lack of concern for the needs of others, sad, but true. Hypocrisy, just about everywhere you look these days. Concern, love, and lust for religious power, yet rejection of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Wow, wow, wow. Despising people unjustifiably, thinking you're better than someone else because of your religion. Willful blindness to the true works of God. Wow, that was quite a list. And it's just good to check our hearts and see, you know, where am I still captivated by that? Because it's been a journey for me. Man, I was deep into it. And it has taken years for the Holy Spirit to just get it all out, all the roots, all. Um, and it, the freedom, the joy, the peace are so worth doing this. So, March 21st, 2024, strategic times, strategic weapons, and strategic warfare. So this morning, I, you know, I was just kind of praying and getting ready to just spend some quality time uh, in God's presence. And I will I felt led to release two warrior hosts to each member of the of the army of light to help and support us in this battle of dark to light. Like these are like some major reinforcements that we have called in. As I ascended to meet the Father, he took me to the council chamber of heaven and I greeted the elders. I was warmly received as I stood behind my assigned elder. And then the father spoke to all of us. We want you, well, he spoke, it's actually this message was for me. We want you to bring this message to the valiant army of light. These are strategic times that call for strategic weapons and strategic warfare. The battle will be become fierce, but I have made you fiercer than anything that arises to challenge you and your freedoms. Since you know how strategic this time is, you must stay connected to my heart and have your ear open to my instructions. You will need strategic weapons, declaring and decreeing my word and my promises. Those are strategic weapons. Arrow prayers that I inspire that will strike the mark and bring destruction to enemy plans. That's in somebody's face. That's a, a bridge comes into your mind. You just send out an arrow prayer, protect that, stop the plans of the enemy, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit prompts you to pray. <clears throat> Speaking out for truth and freedom that exposes lies and hidden agendas. Strategic warfare means you deploy those weapons where and when I direct you to. Doesn't mean you, you speak out no matter where you are or what's happening. You flow with the spirit because he will set up an atmosphere for your words to be received. So flow with him. They will be more powerful and effective that way. You have been assigned two powerful warrior hosts. Learn how to work with them. I went, okay. The precipice is looming in this war. It may look like it's the precipice for your nation and your freedoms. I tell you that it is the precipice for the evil empire. Hallelujah. They will slide down the precipice, precipice they made for you into deep darkness and captivity. Get, get your heart and mind aligned with mine, and our victory awaits on the other side of strategic times, strategic weapons, and strategic warfare. Wow. So I had a great confirmation of my war, my warrior hosts that had been assigned to me. Um, that day, Mark, uh, an old friend from California, he and his wife were on, we were on um, altar ministry together years and years ago. And he uh, started watching my videos and he'll send me a text every now and then after he's uh, seen one. He's a great encourager. Well, that day when he texted me, he had not read this word yet because it was released that morning. And so he didn't know about the two warrior hosts being assigned. And in this text, he said, oh, I want you to be encouraged because you're really protected. I saw two uh, hosts by you that were twice as tall as you. And I went, oh, my goodness. Thank you, Father, for confirming that it re it really did happen and it did because I've seen mine so I've had a, you know some questions how do we learn to work with warrior hosts that have been assigned to us well here's what I've learned so far I feel like a kindergartner in this so what I decided to do first was I asked their names okay I heard two names but I thought 
I, did I hear that correctly? Because it's always so soft, so could easily be dismissed. But however, when I looked up the meaning of their names, I was totally blown away. Trust those small whispers of the spirit. So one of them said to me, his name was Agilon. Well, I thought, well, I'll look it up. And it is actually a Hebrew word. It means a chain, strength, or a stag, a big, powerful stag. And I mean, that blew me away that that's what that name meant. And it's really interesting when Ash and Peggy and Natalie were here that day to visit me. Um, Peggy's the one that got the gold tooth when Johnny Enlow prayed. <laughs> and I was talking to them about a young buck that I had seen in the backyard, just getting his antlers and stuff. And she said, oh, you need to name that deer. That's that's going to be prominent in your life. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that deer represented that warrior angel that was going to come and stand by me. Okay, warrior angel number two was named Desmond. And I thought, Desmond? But I looked it up. It means gracious defender. <sighs> Blown away again. So what I did is I told them I would really appreciate their help in learning how to work with them. So what will happen is they'll, they'll suddenly come into my mind's eye. Like they're standing there. I can tell, okay, they're waiting for me to tell them something to do. So I'll say, okay, what, what do you want me to assign you to? And I'll hear something like, Tell us to secure the perimeter. Okay, I can do that. So I did that just, you know, just around my house. And then I began to feel led to, okay, go out farther into my neighborhood, go under my house, go over my house, go through my house, you know. So, um, you know, things are progressing. Uh, and one day I was really feeling attacked. I could just tell the darkness was out to throw me off track. So, and I asked them to help me fight it off, went away. All right, so we're, we're going to learn in this together. If any of you are farther along, please let us know or let us know, you know, what, what you've heard and discovered. March 22nd, 2024, things will be different, but better. Entering into a new era will require leaving behind familiar ways of doing things. It will mean bravely leaving behind the past and trusting my heart and my promises for a new day. What I have for you in this new era is so much better, so much more life-giving, so much more free, and so much more peaceful. Life as you know it is going to change completely, but it will be a change for the better. There will be an uncomfortable transition period while evil structures and roots are torn down and pulled up. You are in this transition time now. And that is why I continually call you to come close to my heart, feel my love for you, and tune to my voice so that I can guide and direct you. Will you join me in calling forth life and peace out of the destruction and chaos the darkness unleashes? Do you trust me? Do you believe I have the power to protect you and to prosper you? even in the midst of the storm? Will you let go of the, of the familiar so that I can put the superior into your hands? Okay, let me say that again. Will you let go of the familiar so that I can put the superior into your hands? Put your hand in mine and walk bravely into a new day, a new era of great peace and plenty. Things will be different but better. <laughs> All right. So this new era is being brought in by winds of change. And I had another confirmation of that word that I heard. Uh, I believe I heard that on uh, February 28th, 2024, I heard the winds of change are blowing. Well, uh, 32024, Wanda Alger put out a video and she called it the winds of change. So yeah, she said, but as a uh, strong as my winds are, you will not find the answers you seek in the wind. You must continue to stand and watch for much will take place in order for you to hear the clarity of my voice. Shakings will take place and fires will burn, but they are not the final word. 
They're merely demonstrations that will cause men to wonder and hearts to turn. For nothing that man can do, nor anything the enemy can muster, will bring about the outcome I have planned. Even as great shakings occur, know that you are but a part of my divine process. Nothing happens apart from my oversight and rule. And I heard in the winds of change, they are blowing in the promised season of deliverance. Some of these winds of change will be quite strong, and they will leave what looks like a path of destruction. However, what blows over in this season needs to come down and to be reestablished on righteous and true foundations. So very much confirming each other. Um, that's awesome. March 23rd, 2024. Did you hear me? I am asking my army of light if you have heard my last orders to you. This is a season of change that you've never walked through before. And it requires walking closely with me and obeying my instructions and promptings. Have I asked you to lay something down? It could be an old way of doing ministry. Have I been talking to you about spending too much time pursuing drama spinners who keep you coming back with fear bait? Have I been calling you to spend quality time with me, pursuing my heart and learning to hear my voice? Maybe you think obeying these kinds of promptings isn't all that important, but I am telling you that not obeying me will block you from the best things in life that I have for you. It's like you cont you're, con you're continually asking me for more and for increase in your life, but your arms are full of things I've asked you to lay aside so that I can release the best to you. The fruit of obedience is freedom, peace, and fruitfulness. When you in faith let go of what I'm asking you to let go of, then I will fill you with a significant life like you've only dreamed of having. Obedience cuts off the work of the enemy in your life. Watch your life suddenly blossom and grow. Obedience is the water and fertilizer of your future. Did you hear me? Trust me and obey me and enter into my joy and blessing. Well, I got to tell you, the words that I hear, they're not, not for you. They're for me, too. And the Father had really, Holy Spirit had been working on me for several months. My plate just keeps getting more and more and more piled up. And there aren't enough days or hours in the day anymore. Um, and my season, uh, what he was speaking to me about was that my season with his glory was coming to an end. And that was like very hard for me uh, to hear and wrap my mind around because uh, it's been such a blessing. The staff is wonderful to work with. The people I've interviewed on Window Into the Supernatural, fantastic. It, it's just been a lovely season. But, I, and I even had a couple of special projects I had talked to Christy about we, I was going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. And until last Friday, I realized I hadn't had one minute to put towards working on those. And it was Holy Spirit, like, pulled me aside, like, gently told me I'm being delusional, that I cannot do everything that I, I see. It all looks so good and it is so great, but I have to do the best. And that's what he's called me to. So I did um, email them all and sadly say, um, I, I have to obey uh, and thank you for all you've meant in my life. Uh, so anyway, I'm moving on. And uh, Brian, actually, of Love Has a Name YouTube channel reminded me, it was either him or Ash West, I can't remember now, they both gave me really great counsel on my decision, uh, just said, you know, this is the season of open door, and you can't go through an open door if you don't shut one. So, I shall press on, <laughs> trusting my God. <laughs> All right, we have a poem by Denise Savoy, and... Uh, it's really beautiful. It's very encouraging. It's called America's Anthem. It starts out, though our God seems far away and enemies seem here to stay, as fraud and lies stole victory and shook our nation's history. This was uh, written in, oh, I forgot to put the date. I think it was 20 or 21. 
Okay. But God allows evil time to expose its recurring crimes and power wealth on which they dined for those to see whose eyes are blind. But its walls of rotten wood and vitriol of all that's good cannot stand under our God with mighty hand and outstretched rod. God hears our cry, our nation torn. He'll save, rebuild, restore what's worn. Still our, still our revivals born of pain, while evil's purged, yet won't regain. And to tyranny with us now on bended knee, we'll never bow. Instead, we pray and worship him, knowing the swamp will never win. Just hold the God's invitation. He'll avenge all situations. Be strong, courageous, and endure, and know our victory is assured. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Now, she sent me this because the Holy Spirit prompted her to. So we're all learning obedience and things like that. And now see this just blessed all of you, with the gift that the Father has put in her. All right, March 23rd, 2023, we're going to go back a year to a journal nugget, The Sounds of Silence. I thought this was important to go over because there's just so much fear about darkness and silence. And, and it's like, I think God has a much different view of it. He said, a day will come when I silence the voice of the enemy speaking through his puppets, the media. Well, that's good news. What will people do when there are not voices telling them what to think and how to feel? Do you understand how powerful that mesmerizing, lying voice has been? The father said people have grown so dependent on and mesmerized by the lying media, they have lost the ability to think things through or to be able to separate truth from lies. Discernment has fallen by the wayside because people have been slowly duped into depending on others for information rather than learning to search a matter out. I want you to practice your searching skills and your discernment so that you are able to recognize propaganda and smooth lies. You will be called upon to help others learn to search and discern, especially when the sounds of silence fill the airwaves. People will be lost and confused and will need to learn how to think for themselves again. Teaching people to have a foundation in my word will help them learn to separate darkness from light. When you search out things in my word, you will begin to see from my perspective and you'll immediately recognize a counterfeit. Learn to bring your questions to me and I will bring you answers based in truth and righteousness. People's Thinkers have gotten lazy because they have they have allowed talking heads of media to do the thinking for them. When I silence Leviathan's voice and the sounds of silence fill the air, be ready to direct people to me, the fount of all wisdom and discernment. Part of the Great Awakening is to help people. Uh, think and discern again. This will spark creativity and many new inventions that will bless the world. Break free from that mindset that wants to be told what to think and do and be ready to embrace the sounds of silence for then a new age of freedom and prosperity will unfold. Now that, you know, we've all been affected whether we don't think we have or not. Um, now, what, how God prepared me for this journey that we're on right now is like when I was in my 20s, I came across some um, super secret spy novels by uh, Helen McInnes. And she's actually British, but she was married. No, she's American. And she was married to um, a British man who was in MI6. And so she wrote spy novels. Um, that had to do, the main theme was propaganda. How she would uh, describe in the book how this tense situation went down. And then she would describe what the media said about it. And you saw the spin that happened between reality and what the story that they wanted to put out. So I was trained from long, long time ago to recognize when I see a certain pattern, I know it's propaganda. So we we all need to um, dive in 
and learn how to search and think for ourselves again. And that goes for like just going back over and over to people to find out what you should think or do. You need to go to the Holy Spirit. He'll cause you no fear, no anxiety, and he will give you truth and good direction. Uh, Candy McDonald sent me a beautiful biblical picture that God just downloaded it to her uh, about the Jericho March. Now, uh, I'm going to be doing a video later uh, with Candy, and she'll have, give us more detail on this. But I just wanted to give you a little um, taste of it. So she had a revelation of comparing our season to the six-day silent march around Jericho. And then trumpets were blown and shouts were given on the seventh day. So she said these seven days represent the seven years from 2017 to 2024. The last six years, we've battled silently, taking persecution, but battling on. In the seventh year, God is marching with us and will bring down the enemy walls with the blast of a trumpet and a shout by the remnant. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Woohoo. All right, here is a hot and heavy entry. March 24th, 2024, they are stoking their fiery furnace hotter and hotter. As the desperate darkness continues to launch chaos and death agendas, I want you to know that their frantic attempts to gain back power and control are only stoking their fiery furnace hotter and hotter. Your valiant pushback forces of light are removing much of the destruction of the dark schemes. And as you release peace into the atmosphere, it is conquering the chaos and exposing who set up the chaos. The darkness is not going to get away with anything, even if it seems like their judgment and justice is delayed. There is a fullness of time coming when these dark agendas will become so evil that the masses will awaken from their stupor and will realize um, they need my rescue. The full harvest of what the evil ones have sown will be reaped as they are shoved into the fiery furnace of their own making. They have made their own punishment by what they planned for you. And each rebellious and evil act will serve as fuel to heat their fiery furnace hotter and hotter until it consumes them. The earth will open up and swallow them and you will see them no more. This is the future coming for the darkness, so do not fear, but stand strong. In me, forces of light, we will prevail, and your reward and celebration will be great. Just remember, they are stoking their fiery furnace hotter and hotter. All right, we have uh, some more confirmations to share, and I had a word about a storm of glory coming. And Beth S. shared this. I want to share a confirmation of the Father's words to you about his storm of glory. Now, she heard this in January of 2020. So way back then, he's been speaking the same message to us over and over. He said, dip your toe into the river of my love. Swim with me into ventures unknown. Throw caution to the wind. You won't need to be rescued. You will ride the wave of my victory, the swell of my triumph. You will wear the crown of my brilliance, longings fulfilled you shall not want. My wave of glory will roll to the shores without end. For my daughter has arisen. Her robe drips with purple abundance. Her mouth roars with my victory ballad, plundering my storehouse of treasures. All my good pleasure following her out the door. Wow. Powerful. And then Wendy T. had a confirmation of the Golden Glory mantles that we received uh, last week. She said, I was listening to your video for March 19th. I participated in the invocation and impartation of the glory mantles or of the golden mantle of glory. Holy Spirit whispered to her. It is the only armor that covers our back. The glory of God goes behind us. All the pieces of armor in Ephesians 6 are for the front, none are for the back or the shoulders, but mantles are worn over our shoulders and draped down over our back. 
I did a search on the glory of God's scriptures, and Isaiah 58 was a confirmation to me of what I heard. Isaiah 58, 8 in the Amplified. Then your light will break out like the dawn, and your healing, your restoration, your new life will quickly spring forth. Your righteousness will go before you, leading you to peace and prosperity. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Is that amazing or what? Wow. And many of you are shared receiving your mantles. They were quite touching, quite beautiful. I would love to include them all, but um, just don't uh, have the time. But they were amazing. Some of you just received it by faith. Some of you had full-on visions and encounters. It was very, very powerful. However you received them, you've got them, and they're guarding your back, and they will uh, benefit the people you pray for. <laughs> March 25th, 2024. This is our episode title. Perilous Times and Abundant Times. I have shown my prophetic voices that perilous times are coming. But some of these voices have misapplied these revelations as being perilous times for the whole world. These are not perilous times for my people. Rather, these are times of abundance. Does that sound impossible to you that I could bring peril to the darkness while preserving my people and supplying them out of my abundance? I really am that good and I really am that powerful. The perilous times will bring about the destruction of your enemies. The destructive plans they had for you will boomerang back onto them. Why are you giving your emotional energy to anxious thoughts of how to provide and protect yourself? If you invested your time and emotional energy in seeking me, believing my promises, and entering into my peace, you would find yourself in a place of abundance. In this place of peace, I will give you any steps to take that will result in my abundance coming to you. My abundance is not just financial. It is unexpected provision, uh, an increase of faith and anointing, great peace and deep joy. It is providing you with an overflow that you can share with others. Do not choose to believe the perilous times are for you. Instead, choose to believe in the supernatural abundance and deep love of your father. Wow, I would say yes. And going along with that, we had a confirmation of expectant faith that was uh, given a few weeks ago. Uh, Jenna G sent this in. She said, I was so excited to re receive a personal confirmation today. I had just started listening to the Watchman Journal when I stopped it to go get one of my journals to take notes. I grabbed the closest one and opened it to a page that had a post dated March 5th of 2024. Written on it was something Robin D. Bullock had said. It read, call forth your tomorrow today. Call forth God's promises today. I pondered what that meant on my way back to my seat and started listening to Diana again when she said, expectant faith and worship pulls your future promise into a present reality. So she just went, wow. <laughs> All right, we have another beautiful poem uh, by Margaret. Um, yeah. However, I typed her name there is in Westfall. Just missed her last letter there. Um, and she it's called Coming of Age. And she said, we've heard our present situation compared to a number of different events in the Bible. And that's true, like the Red Sea crossing, Lazarus rising from the death, dead, Jesus being raised uh, from the grave uh, forevermore. You know, so those have all been biblical examples that have been used. But she said, I've never thought about it related to, to the incident of Jesus raising the 12-year-old girl from the dead. And 12, you'll know, is the biblical number of God's government. Recently, I was disturbed by a death dream, but I realized that death in a dream can be interpreted as dying to something or coming of age. I suddenly thought of this Bible story in connection to the near-death experience our country seems to be in now. Can you really believe for something this miraculous? Let's see. Coming of age. 
When Jesus was on the way to heal a 12-year-old girl, or a 12-year-old, they learned the girl had died. Jesus told her father he'd still go. He said, don't fear, just keep believing. When they arrived, the mourners laughed. When Jesus said the girl was sleeping, then he went in to call her spirit back. Only a few stood by his side. When he took her by the hand, saying, little girl, arise. In many ways, this is not unlike today. For America the beautiful, it seems too late. Many say if she survives at all, she'll never be the same. One so strong and wise, a beacon of freedom and faith. She now lays weak and compromised in some dark night of the soul. Will she die in the darkness or be awakened to the light? Many have fought and prayed for her. Jesus is emerging from the fog of war with those believing by his side he'll touch America as never before. She'll be strengthened and restored. She'll rise and shine many as one with holy freedom roaring forth. Into the darkness, God's light has come. This is not her time to pass away. This is the long-awaited glorious time when she has finally come of age. Wow. Got God bumps. <laughs> All right, we're going to go through our action items and then go into our signs and wonders photos. Action items are on my blog, my blog, my email, other places um, I'm posting on social media. You've got to open up the description box under the video title, click it open twice, and everything will unfold for you. <laughs> Don't let the enemy plant discouragement in your minds over seeming losses. Look at events through the spiritual eyes of God who has a bigger perspective. Remember those seeming losses are bait to, to get them to go further, further into the trap. Don't get caught up in believing doom and gloom reports. We're to use our authority to call out exposure, exposure, exposure. Decree that judgment and justice would be released on those partnered with darkness and that their sources of money would be cut off and diverted to the righteous. Declare that their evil schemes will backfire on them and they will feel Haman's noose around their neck. The father said, we would. We have been each assigned two powerful warrior hosts. We are to learn to work with them. The father is calling us to come close to his heart, feel his love for us, tune to his voice so that he can guide us and direct us in this transition time. He asks us to join him in calling forth life and peace out of the destruction and chaos the darkness unleashes. And again, I will remind you, I have a teaching, five video teaching series on hearing God's voice under playlists on my YouTube channel. So take advantage of that. Sharpen your skills at learning. Will we let go of the familiar so that he can put the superior into our hands? He invites us to put our hand in his and walk bravely into the new day. This unknown season requires us to walk closely with the Father and obey his promptings. In faith, let go of what he is asking us to let go of, and he will fill us with a significant life. Trust and obey and enter into his joy and blessing. We are to practice our searching skills and our discernment to be able to recognize propaganda and lies. When the media silence comes, we will need to help others learn to search and discern. Give them a foundation in God's words. In God's word, bring your questions to the Father. He wants you to. He longs to respond to you. That's why learning to journal his voice is so important, because that's a really good way. Ask, we have, Father, what do you think about this? And you just journal what you hear and go back over and read it and uh, get the good out of it. Um, let's see. Never forget that our valiant pushback of the darkness and their schemes is removing much of the destruction from these schemes. As we release peace into the atmosphere, it is conquering the chaos and exposing who released it. We're not to waste our emotional energy on anxious thoughts of how to provide for and protect ourselves. We're to invest our time and emotional energy in seeking him, believing his promises and entering into his peace. In a place of peace, we can seek him for any preparations we might need to make. Do not choose to believe that the perilous times are for you. Instead, choose to believe in the supernatural abundance 
and deep love of our Father. All right, I just thought there was Psalm 37. Uh, in the, I was reading in this in the Amplified, just so that you know, this is founded in God's word, that the perilous times are not for us, they are for the evil ones. And this was Old Testament. So, for those who do evil will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. That's not heaven. That's this earth that they will inherit. But the humble will at last inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity and peace. Exactly what he's been promising us. These are just uh, sentences taken out of the whole psalm. Uh, go and read the whole thing. It's, it's really good. The sword of the ungodly will enter their own heart. And in the days of famine, they will have, and this is speaking now, the contrast. The ungodly are going to have a sword enter their heart, but in the days of famine, we will have plenty and be satisfied. But the wicked, the ungodly will perish. They will vanish like smoke. They will vanish away. I have seen a wicked, violent man with great power, yet he passed away and lo, he was no more. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge and stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Wow. Awesome. All right. Just to bring a little clarity to our signs and wonders photos. Um, I love receiving them. I love viewing them. I feel your wonder and awe at uh, what the father's showing you. Um, just um, be, be sure if the photo is really, really fuzzy or it's really, really light, I probably won't show it because I know it won't on the, you know, on the computer, on the video, uh, it's just not going to show up. Uh, I've still enjoyed seeing it, but um, so that's why some of you won't see uh, some of the ones that you have sent in, but keep trying, send them in as small as you can, not a big size, a small size, because they're much less distorted than uh, for me to work with. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. We need to go here and we need to go there and let's do this. All right. Where are we on our line here? Let me see. Go back to right there. there uh, there's always someone that, that gets out of order somewhere. <laughs> This one I know isn't in the proper order, but Amy V sent us this and uh, it's a beautiful snow landscape with a gorgeous rainbow cloud uh, showing up there. Wow, wow, wow. And this is from Watch the Sky, which is Ann Kristen. I think that's a TikTok channel that she has. Okay, Carla B sent us this. It is an amazing sky filled with glory host. And this was taken in Florida. And you know, Amy V is also from Florida and she sends us amazing host pictures. Um, the battle is on over Florida. It is rising up to be a righteous state and it, you know, it's not going to be there. There's going to be pushback to it. So uh, this is an interesting thing right here that's coming in. Um, I don't know what that is. Is that a wing? Is it a battering ram that one of these hosts are carrying? Here's a big lighted up uh, V of glory. Very cool picture. Uh, our next few pictures are going to be from Carla B. She sent in some astounding things. Here is a complete arrow host. Uh, these, you know, the feathers are just perfect there. And it's coming down like right. Uh, I love to see them landing because it means our help is near. Okay, so we have right here a Holy Spirit bird-shaped portal and a beautiful bird, like it flew from through there. Um, incredible picture. So beautiful. And there, there are host wings right here too. And this one, Carla, is a huge, huge host wing. And it has a rainbow right in the middle of it. Wow. So gorgeous. And this one um, is a huge host. You can see up here in the sky, these big, big wings. And then down here, um, what was I pointing to? I think just arrows. 
because they have been, and here's another arrow, they show up and show up and uh, they're uh, pretty significant in our day. Carla sent this huge uh, bird-shaped host um, body here, gorgeous wing, wings here, um, amazing picture and the glory is coming up to shine on it. Uh, Sharon Kay sent us this beautiful picture. It is a rainbow host um, and also an arrow host because it, you can see the feathered wings. I love the rainbow host. We have seen quite a few of these. Um, they must be a special uh, regiment or something like that. Uh, Lori C. sent us this. It's actually something her security camera captured. And she, what she saw here was uh, a flaming. See this flaming sword of the Lord just appeared in the camera. And she felt like that was coming because I know that's a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I, I mean, there are some creepy demonic faces in these trees. And there's actually a skull right here. And she felt like that was the sword of the Lord coming out to deal with them. Wow. You know, I think that ring cameras are, for some reason, are capturing supernatural things, which is really, really interesting. I think God's behind that. Kim O oh sent us uh, this picture, and you can see it is a perfect eye. I mean, talk about God's eye is, and what she said came to her, and this was taken in Georgia, his eye is on the sparrow. Indeed it is. He is watching over us. Okay. This uh, KW and Glenda both sent this picture. Um, Kevin Heinholz is the photographer. This was taken in Montana. And these are incredible tsunami clouds. <laughs> Those are just like unbelievable. Amazing. Um, God's tsunamis are coming. Exposures and also his glory. So... And uh, Deb, I think N. Deb, no, that says Deb J. Where am I? Oh, okay. Something is out of order here. There, where's my Deb J? Rainbow around the sun in Colorado. Pretty awesome. Uh, Laura Lee sent this. Uh, this is dark to light. Do you see that dark shelf of clouds and then a light one coming through? Laura Lee sent us this uh, also, and it is, um, I'm out of order here, so not quite sure what this one is. Oh, it's a rainbow host, and then this beautiful glory portal right here. So you see the wing, and see the wing, and here's the rainbow again. All right, awesome. Uh, Mary B sent us this is a huge host see here's his head and he's kind of looking down to the ground but look at this huge huge arm and I heard strong arm Ooh, a strong arm let me see if she said where that was taken oh why why do you put my things out of order no she didn't so <laughs> I forgive you okay Diana O sent this it was a foggy day in South Dakota and she saw this beautiful glory cross appear in the fog. Mm, beautiful. Uh, Laura Lee sent us, it's one of those pterodactyls, you guys, that appears in the sky. But look, there's arrows going out after it. Haven't figured out like what marine spirit that represents. But uh, Julie E sent us this one. And it is a dark to light rainbow from California. And she heard from the Lord, I have you covered. What's most amazing about this rainbow is that it is dark above it and below it, it is completely light. Like God's covenant promises, keeping us safe. Love it. All right, Joanne sent this amazing picture was forwarded from Working Man Memes, and it is, um, if, I think 
you know, if you use your imagination, you can see who that reminds you of. Maybe D, J, T. And there's a fiery eye there. Pretty cool. Okay, Amy sent this. Um, it's a pretty cool picture. There's Jesus' face right here. But then she realized as she backed out, there's a lion superimposed over that face of Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Eh? And then Karen, who lives in California, opposite end, also saw the face of Jesus and a lion superimposed around it. So, wow, what a uh, confirmation. Uh, Laura Lee sent us um, this one. Where are you? Okay, up here there's a mirror, and it actually like has an eye or a portal in it. Not real clear, but then also these amazing rain or arrow hosts. And uh, there was a face that she saw right here. Pretty hard to see, but she, oh, here's the face up here. And it's this guy going, ah, like I've been exposed. And then there's a tiny little cross right there. Like, mm, you don't have a chance. Kathy Kay posted this. It is a great white shark, and the sun is his eye. Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> and Kathy Kay sent us this one as well. It is a glory angel, and there is actually a rainbow. A little hard to see, but there's a rainbow on top of this cloud. So look at this. Amazing, amazing wings coming out. And then a portal. And see, th these are wings up here, but look right here. Here's the shape of a glowing angel or host right there. Beautiful picture. Uh, Gwen O sent this sunset of fire and glory. Really, really pretty. Um, the sky is on fire, just like the father told us he was going to do. Julie H. sent this. It's a double eagle heads, and it was taken in Michigan. This one you can see uh, pretty clearly. Here's the head, the beak. Here's a huge, huge wing. Here's a huge, huge wing. And then this face, a little bit hard to see, but there is an eagle head, and so they're kind of looking at each other. So double eagles. Michelle M. sent this picture that Mike took on the Mexican Riviera. Um and, it, you know, this glorious moonlight, but look, there's host wings all over in this. And it's like purity sent out across the water. Beautiful. Oops, did I go back? There's Julie's, there's Michelle's that Mike took. Here we go to here. Uh, Jackie M sent this one. It is a glory fire sunset, and it has such beautiful purples and blues in it, like that promise of the blue skies that are coming for us. Uh, Laura Lee sent this. It is eagles swooping, and you'll see there's this bad guy right here. Look at his huge eyes of like terror, and his mouth going, ah, there's his hair, and here's this eagle, beak open. Here's the seagull coming too. Wow. Wouldn't want to be that guy. Okay. I need to keep that one because we missed a couple that I hope are going to show up. If not, I will uh, go ahead and show them next week. Uh, this is Bill and Connie sent this glory cloud sunset in Missouri. It's just like a, there's blue sky and then there's this lighted up glory cloud cloud just resting on the land. Laura Lee sent us this enormous uh, sunbow from Florida, where sun dogs aren't really supposed to be. And it's, it's the rainbow, but also that beautiful white rainbow that is surrounding it as well. Lori K sent these hosts streaming out over California. It's exactly what we want to see. And Marty J sent this, and you can see a bird. Um, and I, I don't know if this is a host or if this is a bad guy. And here's another face right here. He kind of looks like one of the cloud of witnesses to me, looking to see what's going on. And this this uh, looks like a bird, but it could be a man too. So 
um, interesting message in the sky. Uh, Marty J sent this one as well. It is a bird host. And um, oh, that first that first one had nothing to do with birds. It was faces. Sorry, Marty. Oh gosh. Yeah, so this is the one that's got the bird host in it. And then you'll see other host wings here as well. Okay. All right. And then one more from Marty J. Uh, this is a rainbow um, that is marking this. It looks like a marine spirit. Do you see, like, here's the head, the eye, the mouth, the, the gills, or um, like the fins of a, of a fish-like creature. But apparently there are good ones, too. So, which makes sense. That's how God operates, isn't it? He has a plan for their every dark plan. Uh, policy sent us this one, and it is a double heart portal. And that was taken in California. So precious. Here's one right here. And then the other one is right here. They're kind of tip to tip. Uh, Sarah D sent us this. Um, shortly after she was saved, she was she was asking God to reveal himself in nature to her. And this heart portal showed up in the cloud in the clouds over Michigan. <laughs> Not sweet. It's really precious. Uh, Sarah D then she sees a lot of hearts. This is a heart, a heart that's backlit with his light for her. So pretty. And then we have an amazing heart that appeared in a rainbow cloud. It's, and it's a portal. It's actually uh, glory. You can see glory coming through. So pretty cool. Uh, Cap J sent us this. It is uh, what she felt like right here. It was a man. See his arm, his head, his other arm. She felt like he was fighting for his life. And then he went to heaven and that this arrow was taking out an evil entity. Um, no, but, oh, I think that was my idea that this arrow was coming to take out an evil entity. So um, darkness loses, the light wins. Okay, where am I? Right there, I think. <laughs> okay, Thomas K. sent this. This is a fun picture. It's not a sign in the sky, but he took this picture of this water balloon hitting his daughter, and it formed a host. Do you see the wings? And there's a head here and everything. I mean, I love it. God's sense of humor is beautiful. Michelle M. Uh, sent us this uh, host, and then there's this huge evil face in the sky in horror, and this this is, um, let's see, where am I? This entity is is falling. This you can see arms outstretched. He's in a free fall. And then there was a beautiful little heart just tucked in here as warfare is taking place and uh, darkness is being overcome. Okay, uh, Joanne sent us this. It was this was from Hank Kuhneman's um, prophetic pulse. And he showed this picture of a triple rainbow, which he had prophesied. One, two, and three. So that's pretty cool. Okay, where am I? There we are. Oh, I keep trying to go the wrong way today. All right. This is not in the skies, but it is indeed a wonder of God's beauty. Um, and it actually reminded me of the garden I go to in heaven. So um, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. And it was sent in by Carla M. And it was taken in the, the state of Washington. Beautiful. Terry S. sent us this uh, eagle with a man's face. Is he a watcher? Could be. And then there's this beautiful glory arrow. So you see here, it's like a human face, but then there's 
feathers and there's claws actually coming out here. And we do know that in heaven, the um, four living creatures, some have the face of a man, some of an eagle. And so could get some mixed up here. Powerful, uh, a powerful being. A uh, Selena, um, Selena V sent us this uh, huge feather arrow. And that was taken in California, right there. Huge, huge feather arrow. Wow. And then Selena um, V sent us this one too. And it's another cloud that reminds you of the face of someone. Here's some hair, nose, mouth, chin. Mm -hmm. That funny that we had two sightings in that week that these were sent in. Jackie O sent this host with a sword that appeared in the skies of Florida again. So there's the face drawn in and then here's the sword. Okay, here's an unusual picture. Uh, Cheryl M. sent this in. A family member took this while they were in Giza, Egypt. And after they took the picture, they could not explain what this white pillar was doing in the dream. It's like a white pillar of light that appeared. Really interesting. Okay, this is an interesting photo. Sandra S. sent that it, this in. It was from October of 2012, and it was actually um, a picture of Hurricane Sandy. But I want you to notice how it looks like a dragon. I mean, and I don't think we knew back then as much as we do now about praying against weather manipulation and things. So shows you that there's uh, something involved in that. Uh, Kerwin sent us this. Uh, it's a rainbow in California. And again, I love seeing rainbows in California because it's God's promise to them. Again, we got light and dark. And I just have a feeling this is a triple rainbow picture that he sent in. There's one here, there's one here, but very faintly, there's one right here. So, wow, way to go, Kerwin. Okay, um, Candy F sent this glory cloud and highlighted she saw a mother holding her baby. See the arms, here's her little bun and her little face looking down at this baby and just... Um, the father saying how precious moms and babies are to him. Pretty cool. Amy V sent us this. And uh, it's a Winds of Change host in Florida. So you can see it. Ed, I should do some pretty cool stuff. And he is blowing out Winds of Change. This next picture is really, really unusual. Melissa C., uh, and she is from Canada. She took this picture of the clouds. And if you look closely, they say, fight, F-I-G-H-T. Wow, what a message for Canada written in the clouds. Fight, and we'll fight with you. April. April H sent this uh, fish cloud. Do you see? Here's his little nose. It goes back here. Here's his fin. Here's another fin. And he's raining. I've never seen a fish cloud rain. I have a feeling it might be an evangelistic anointing that was coming down. So that's pretty cool. April, are you called to be an evangelist? <laughs> uh, Catherine B. sent us this. It is a battering ram cloud and another sighting of someone familiar. Hair mouth, chin, and here is the huge battering ram. Wow. Being wielded on the earth against the darkness. Gwen O oh sent us this amazing dark to light with glory streams and a rainbow. So I have the darkness up above, but there is a beautiful glory light and fire, and it's releasing glory up into the atmosphere. Powerful. All right, this one's by GGL, and it is an eagle. And I should have darkened this one up, sorry. Um, but it, it really did look like an eagle when uh, she sent it. <laughs> so isn't that amazing how many eagles uh, we're seeing? And just a repeat of a lot of themes God's making to us. 
Cheryl M. saw uh, these layers of color in the sunrise, and it reminded her of the resurrection, just those fresh, uh, beautiful pastel colors. Now, uh, this one's by Paul K., and it is evil ones that were coming to destroy. And you can see, this is of Florida. Do you see these bad guys? I mean, these are dudes, not nice looking. And they are, you can, I can just feel the speed they're coming with. But look, what's ready to meet them? Claws upturned, ready to catch them. Yes. Um, this one is Paul K. Oops, no. Yes, there are two by him, three by him. These are streaming hosts. I've never seen them quite wet this way before, but they are coming in, boy. They're like... Almost like arrow hosts, like coming in for a landing. Let's see, did I get? Seems like I, I missed one there somewhere, but don't see it. There was Cheryl. There's the bad guys. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, this is a host that um, Paul K also saw, and so it's it's either a host or a, a, like a bird shape, or it's a fighter, a stealth fighter. I like that. Okay, Paul K. also sent us this one. And it is a really, really interesting uh, Hebrew shaped cloud that he saw in his in his over his house and it has to do this hebrew letter has to do with the number 19 and it's unpronounceable i don't know how it's pronounced <laughs> anyway um you can see he he showed us on the side there uh how the cloud is shaped like that and um it has a really interesting uh name it's associated with the number 100 um it's can mean the back of the head. It can mean the eye of the needle. It can mean a monkey. It can be speaking of the contrast between the sacred and the profane, which would make sense with the monkey. You know, that is often an unclean animal uh, in their day. Uh, but a hundred means children of promise, children of maturity, recompense and reward. And 19 is divine order connected to judgment. So, wow, pretty powerful, those things that he saw. Uh, Nat sent us this. It's an anchor that's connected to heaven. <laughs> pretty cool. That's taken over New York. He's got us. Nat took this one as well, and it is hosts and arrow forces over New York, and there are traps which is so cool. He's just showing the traps right here. Here they are. And the, and the hosts are going, come on, come this way. Got something for you. Uh, Gwen O sent this. It is a black horse that's fleeing the light. And then I also see a sunbow or a moonbow around that. But here's the horse's head. Here's his ears, neck, legs, legs, body going back there. That was pretty awesome. And right there, there's a huge, huge uh, sunbow or sundog or moonbow, whichever it was. <laughs> uh, Cindy C. sent us this sunrise in um, Oklahoma. A uh, beautiful fire uh, coming from that. Uh, love it. Oklahoma, you're loved. Deanna K. sent this. And it's a spiral host. Kind of looks like the DNA. Uh, and we've seen several like that in those shapes, I think coming to protect our DNA. So that was taken over Ohio. This is Amy V, and it is a battling host. Now, this is her original photo. This is the head, his arm and weapon outstretched. Here's his wings and body coming on down. And here's some bad guys right here. I think that he's wiping out. And then um, someone else on X who uh, follows Amy, Chris C, drew, she messed with the picture and drew this in. 
so that we could really see. Isn't that incredible? Look at that weapon that he's carrying. I would not want to be a bad guy. Yikes. Okay, well, we did miss a few, but I will pick them up. I'm, sometimes I don't know, you know, what happens in the process, but um, we'll we'll get it all come out in the wash for you. <laughs> um, so that's our signs of wonders for this week. I hope you enjoyed those. Thank you so much for all of you who are contributing uh, to this part of our program. Um, just amazing to see what God's doing. Well, let's end with a word of prayer, shall we? Oh, Father, thank you. You have given us such powerful words this week, words of hope, words of light, words of courage, words of learning to hear your voice and to follow after you. This is a new season you're walking us into, and we ask that you take us step by step, just like you're going to be teaching us and training us how to use our warrior hosts that have been assigned to us. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for this amazing time that we are living in. We want to come through totally believing you and totally receiving all the rewards that you want to shower on us for our faithfulness because we believed in your faithfulness. So further equip, gird us up in your strength and in the armor of light, and we will repel the darkness until it is defeated, fighting by your side. We thank you. We pray this in the precious and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood that was shed for us and made it possible for all this to be happening. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you too for all you're doing in our lives. And we bless you, three in one God. Amen. And amen. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, it's been a joy to be with you until we meet again. May you be blessed with his peace, his strength, and his great glory. Bye for now. <laughs>